Let's go to Ben in Chitone in Chicago. What's up, Ben? Uh, it's going good. Excellent. What's up, man? How can I help? All right. So a lot of context here. I'll try to get through as much as I can. But my fiance, who I'll call my wife for the call, just because by the time this airs, we'll be married in a couple of weeks from now. And it's fewer syllables, so that makes it easier for both of us. <laughs> um, Congratulations, so man. We, yeah, thank you. We, we got a home about nine months ago, and it's our first home that we've ever had. So obviously... When you get a new home, there's a lot you can read about. There's a lot you can learn, but there's a lot that you don't know. And you learn a lot of first-time homebuyer lessons. And unfortunately, one of those lessons recently came up. So uh, last week, I was about 40 miles away training boxing at my old gym. Uh, the wife was at home. And a couple blocks away from us, there's like a, a commercial district um, with a vape shop. And that shop had gotten shot up. There were about seven or eight shots that were fired. Uh, gunmen fled the scene. Uh, no one's really sure where they went. Um, but obviously, from my home, you could hear the gunshots. You could then have a, see all the cops come. All the cop cars were within view. And because he had fled the scene, the cops were running around looking through all the yards, including ours, to see if they could find the gunman. So I wasn't aware that this was happening as it was happening because I was at the gym about 40 miles away. My phone was in my bag because I'm obviously not checking my phone while I'm training. And when I finished up, checked my phone, saw that my wife had dealt with all this and was very rattled by it. Mm -hmm. And so it sort of was this situation where for her, she, she has a lot of concerns where she felt unsafe. I, I was pretty sure just based on what I had seen on it, that she wasn't in any danger, sure. especially not by the time that I heard about it. So I wasn't as concerned about that at the point, at that point, but I did feel as though having the house for nine months that I'd really missed an opportunity to really do my job and do my part as kind of the man of the house and really help protect the house, have a, plan in place in case anything happened so she knew what to do or if I was there I would know exactly what to do um, to actually have like the right equipment if needed to protect ourselves because at the moment we are currently unarmed all we really, all we really have is um, pepper spray and some kitchen knives Did you say the right equipment like get a bunch of guns? Um, I don't know if we need a bunch necessarily but guns are definitely on okay. that list yeah Part of your equipment <laughs> the, way, the way you said equipment I was thinking like we're going to get some rakes and a shovel and a pitchfork <laughs> Uh, but you're talking about getting a gun. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I'm pretty familiar with a lot of like combat stuff. Like as I kind of hinted there, like I was doing boxing, like I've, I've been in combat sports for a while and as much as I would love to just handle everything hand to hand, I feel like it's the best way to do it. And you can use the least force necessary. Um, the most important thing in a fight is range and there is nothing better range than a gun. You could take the scariest guy, say Mike Tyson, Ask me if I'd fight him for a million dollars. I'd say no. Ask me if I'd fight him from 50 yards away with a gun in my hand, and he has none. I'd probably win that fight because that's effectively the power of one of those tools. And so if somebody is coming to my home to do harm and has one of them and I don't, um, it's potentially going to be a very bad day, not just for me, but for my family, and especially if I'm not home and I'm not there to protect. So ha having that scare, to me, it, it just kind of reinforces that it would be a very wise move to have a weapon uh, if needed. Um, the odds of it being necessary aren't incredibly high, but in the event that it does happen, it would be very important to have. Um, but that's where the problem begins. So um, my wife uh, comes from a left-wing background. Uh, her family is very left-wing, and she's kind of got like a visceral fear of having a gun. Like, just It's not so much like... Like, it, it, to her, it's like the idea of having a gun in her home is just something that she's very uncomfortable with, mm -hmm. uh, not only because of the fact that the gun is effectively a death machine, but also because, like, actually seeing it sort of, like, it, it tells you that there is a potential for harm out there that that gun may be needed one day. So she's incredibly uncomfortable with it. So it puts me in a spot where if I feel like it's my job to protect the home, I have to decide, do I... If I'm unable to convince her, and obviously there's a correct answer here, is to lay out a great case where she she relents and says, "Okay, this is the right move," and I'm I'm on board with it. But if I'm not able to do that because it's going to be a lot of work that's going to be needed for that, do I either a go with her wishes and not get the gun, and then we just don't have it, or b potentially end up in a situation where the gun would have been the thing that would have saved us, but we didn't get it because I went against my better judgment, and then something really bad happens. All right, let me hop in here. Um... First, uh, let's, I want to get rid of the left-wing, right-wing framing, okay? All of us grew up in homes that give us particular strengths and particular baggage that we bring into the home that when we get married, we're creating on our own, 
Okay. So I don't want her to, I don't want you to saddle her and I don't want her to saddle herself with, well, I grew up in this super right wing home and we were pew pew or this super left wing home and we didn't have, I don't want any of that. I would rather her take ownership of how she feels right now. And you take ownership of how you feel right now in her home, in the home that she is creating with you. Um, she does not feel comfortable having a gun in your home. In the home that you are creating with her, you don't feel comfortable not having a gun in your home. Okay. That let's frame, let's start it there because it keeps all the baggage and all the smoke and rah, it keeps all that out of it. Because all of us, regardless of the homes we grew up in, we have to make choices about the homes that we are going to create for ourselves. Okay. So I'm going to back all the way out of this thing and then I'll answer your very specific question. Okay. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. You are feeling, what you are feeling has nothing to do with guns. Mm -hmm. Okay. You are feeling something terrible and beautiful and terrifying all at the same time. Can I tell you what it is? Yeah. It's love. Mm -hmm. And the only way love works is if somebody's vulnerable. Somebody said, you could hurt me. And they say, and you could hurt me. And that's how we're going to connect. Okay, it's taking the covers off the plugs and actually doing the scary thing of plugging in. Okay, mm -hmm. and what you are coming f face to face with when you got done boxing, right? And I trained for years, like it feels good and all hardcore. And there's a very, you know what? My, all my training, all my years of training, and I train with people who are in the UFC. I train with all kind of crazy. The years of training, a hundred percent of the time, I will walk away from a fight. That's what I got from my training. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm gonna walk away. It's not worth mm -hmm. it. And I don't know who's yeah. got a who's gonna smash me in the head with a hammer. I don't know who's got a gun pointed on me. I'm walking away. Mm -hmm. Your wife is well, okay. Well, knock your lights out because I know my wife. So y'all have a great day. I'm out of here. Right. So all that what you've come face to face with is you're not gonna be able to protect her all the time. And there's going to come moments, whether it's in the car, whether it's an, an office mate, whether it's a boss who's a jerk, whether it's her dad, whether it, who her older brother, who knows, whatever it is, you can't be everywhere all the time. And this is beyond the gun conversation. This is something you have to make peace with. This idea that I married her, so I got to protect her. I want you to reexamine that. You do need to have a plan. And that was a good thing that came out of this. You'll need to sit down and say, whoa, what are we going to do? Right? Same as the first time something catches on fire in a, new, in, a, in, a, in a newlyweds new home. And they're like, oh, we don't have a fire drill. Like, what do we do? Yeah. Um, or the, the sit down and do a will together. Like, who's going to get the dog and the kids when we die, right? Um, those are all important. So glad you'll have a plan. And part of your plan might be having a gun. Great. But above that, there's something powerful that you need to absorb, which is you cannot be everywhere all the time for her 24-7, 365. It's impossible. And that is a burden you are putting on yourself that's going to make you insane. It's going to make you mm -hmm. mad, okay? If you live in a home that is simply unsafe, do whatever you got to do to move. If you happen to be in a house where there was a crime committed a couple of blocks over and the police came and it was unnerving, yeah, that's unnerving, man. It's wild. It's really unnerving. Um, that's something to absorb and feel and then put that into your plan. So is, are, are you tracking with me so far? Yeah. It's scary as hell to think somebody could hurt my wife and I'm not there. Is that true? Yeah. I know. Yeah. Like, it, I understand I can't be there all the time, but I guess part of me is just like, if I'm not there, then I just want her to have the best chance possible. And there you go. There you obviously go. she'd have a better chance if there was a weapon there than if there wasn't. That's, 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 that's uh, p potentially. Potentially. Um, so answering beneath that, creating a safe environment for your family, we're going to have, uh, there'll be debates on what the word safe means in the comments of this thing. I know. Um, if your wife tells you, I can't sleep if there's a gun in this house at this moment, I would recommend not overriding her right now. Okay. That, doesn't, that, is, that doesn't sound like a loving move or a safe mm -hmm. overall move. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I would, here's what I would do. I would create a, what would we do plan with your wife? And so let's sit down and have some fun with it. Like, and maybe invite a couple of your neighbors over. Like, what would we do? 
If somebody showed up and started filling the blank, banging on the door, are we going to answer the door? Are we going to call 911? Like, what would we do? And let's go through some of those things. We, I live out in the country, man. And my wife and I have had those conversations. And uh, who would we call? Where would we go? I, we've talked to my kids. Hey, if I ever fall off a ladder while you're here, here's where you go. You're going to go down the hill and you're going to go across the creek to this guy's house. And so have that plan. That's awesome. Um, the second thing is I would invite your neighbors over to your house and y'all have an open conversation, get to know their names. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's going to give your wife peace that she is not isolated and maybe having uh, your neighbor's name or two or three people she could call if something sets off is going to be much more of a gift than knowing there's a John Wick gun in the drawer back there. Okay. Okay. The third thing is if it's possible, and this sounds so cheesy and I know, but my dad was a cop. So uh, if you have a conversation with the police, uh, invite them over or have somebody go visit, have somebody swing by and just to develop a relationship with them, get the crime stats for your area, know how safe it is where you live, right? That could be a possible thing. So let's get to the gun part. I am a, my dad was a homicide detective, a SWAT guy, and I'm a Texan. So I've got enough guns in my house. Okay. Also, my wife grew up in Texas. She was a competitive shooter and she hates them. She doesn't like them. Okay. Um, she's more of a statistician than me and just looks at the data that more people get hurt with their own guns than they actually fight off intruders. Um, and I don't know if that data is true, but that's, it floats around out there. So here's what I would recommend. Sit down with your wife and say, Hey, would you take a class with me? Would you at least go to a range and try? And she might say, absolutely not. I will not do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, Chances are she will. Or would you take it? It would make me feel more secure if we just went to to took a class together. Or would you feel more safe taking a shotgun class, which I think is a better home defense weapon than a 45 or whatever thing. Would, um... Would you be willing to go do that with me? I'm going to take a class. I want to really know what I'm doing and I want to know how this stuff works. And by the way, even if you've done it your whole life, I'm going to take a course. I would love it if you joined me. In that way, it's much less. I watched a lot of movies and it's a lot more. No, I'm going to get trained on how to take care of my family and keep everybody safe. Does that make sense? Yeah, I pulled the idea around her. I guess just the idea of being in the presence of one is kind of difficult, but absolutely. The more we talk about it, I think she'll move on a little bit more. We we both have the same goal. We could, we both want to keep the family safe, and right. obviously we don't have kids yet, but that's something we want to get started on soon. So yeah, I, I think we have the same goal. It's just how to get there. Is I think I, taking a class. There's stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I think there's something to be gained by taking a class, um, and. You can think about this all day long. It's not until you actually experience it that there's any sort of transformation. I can talk about gun safety all day long with my kids. Um, It's a very big deal to me that they know exactly how these things work and why they're so dangerous and why they're to be revered and why they are very specific tools for very specific moments. Um, And so I'm very intentional with my kids. I don't want it to be some dragon somewhere that they call upon thinking because they've watched some movies, right? I want them to actually have seen it and felt it and smelled it, right? Smelt it. And I want them to have experienced all of the, the whole process. Um, and now I've got a 12-year-old little boy that is in absolute reverence. He handles a weapon in my presence better than adults I'm with. It's mm-hmm. very, very impressive. But it's through years of just training, right? And high, high, high intentionality. Um, and so I tell you to tell you, I think a class just talking about it, like, yeah, 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 man, that's not gonna, that's not gonna move the needle on the safety conversation. Actually mm-hmm. saying, Hey, I'm going to go take a class cause I want to get good at this. I want to be very competent in that. And what you're going to find is very similar to, um, very similar to your boxing training, your martial arts training. I was really cavalier, my man, really cavalier. I was one of the first guys in Texas to get the CHL when that was a thing. And I, I'm a real cavalier about the whole thing. And then I started going into homes and helping police officers clean up suicide scenes. 
I started going into homes to tell mothers that their kids have been shot and killed. I started running around. I had a patrol car that I went on patrol, and I got to see some things that really changed my perspective on that. Similar to, I trained MMA and boxing, all that stuff, and I ended up fighting. I ended up walking. It made me an infinitely more peaceful guy. Became very, very able to take care of myself, which empowered me to then walk away. And it was when I got out of the movies and started showing up to these homes and cleaning up scenes that will haunt me for the rest of my life that I made peace with, oh, man, I'm going to do everything in my power to create a safe home environment that doesn't include first offense. Pew, 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 right? Because the reality of how that plays out is gnarly. Now, can I take care of myself? You better believe it. Yes. I've trained and I still train. But I do those things so I don't have to. And I hope that that, that, that makes sense. I hope that that makes sense. Um, my promise to you is if y'all just ran out today and bought a gun and put it in your house, your wife would not feel safer. And statistically speaking, y'all wouldn't be quote unquote safer. If y'all go take classes and you learn what to do and you have a plan of what happens if somebody knocks on the door, if somebody beats the door and if somebody kicks in your car window, whatever. Now we've got a plan that we've practiced. That's where safety comes from. That's when your body goes, okay, we know what to do. We know what to do. So that's my recommendation, my brother. Thank you so much for trusting me with a call. Um, good luck with your wedding. I hope everything goes awesome and hope, uh, hope she still wants to marry you after nine months of living with you. Just kidding. Hope she. I hope it all works out great, man. And uh, thanks for calling. Thanks for calling. Um, this is a hard conversation, but I appreciate your trust. 